A huge decision for any data team is how fast you wanna update or refresh your data. And a common approach is just doing it on a batch schedule, but for some, that's not fast enough. They want data more real time or more quickly than waiting for the next batch. So if you find yourself in that scenario, what options do you have? And there are a few different high level approaches, but in this video, I wanna talk about one in particular known as the Lambda approach. And this is gonna introduce you to a high level strategy that combines both elements of batch scheduling as well as real time streaming. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have an understanding of what it's all about and be able to decide if this makes sense for you and your team. So as we can see, a lot of the high level components are the same, but in a Lambda architecture, you're breaking up some components into a batch process and others into a stream. And by a stream, that could mean a messaging queue like Apache Kafka. It could be change data capture on a database, which is sending information for every insert, delete, update of a record. And that information goes through a different process. So in a Lambda architecture, you have essentially two paths. You have data getting loaded into the data lake through the batch process, as well as the stream. And the stream is also putting data into the data lake but you have this other path here that allows you to go directly to analytics. So you can effectively start reporting and viewing data in real time as it comes through by connecting it this way. And this is where you get into the concept of real time processing. And there are different tools that you can use in this transformation section that allow you to process data stream information. And a stream, typically it's gonna look like JSON data coming through, but it'll depend on the tool you use. So obviously this helps for companies that want to be able to mix the two options. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. But the downside to this is number one, you're doubling up on transformation logic. You need to maintain it in two different places. You have one area with your real time processing logic and another for your batch transformation. You need to make sure those are aligned. So that's number one. And number two is really complexity. The concept of streaming here does require different tools, different skill sets that are not as straightforward as maybe a plug and play batch tool that you can use. This requires more infrastructure, a little bit more overhead to set up. Data types are different. So all that requires more time, certain skill levels. So there is a trade-off in terms of cost for making this type of architecture possible. So it's up to you to decide, is that type of approach and that type of investment worth it to get data a little bit faster? Or will you be just as effective by doing everything in a batch? So those are the type of decisions teams need to make when deciding if this architecture makes sense. But of course, if you can get it right, it's a nice option. I typically recommend starting with the batch modern warehouse approach and then moving to data streaming and implementing that only if you feel it's absolutely necessary and something that your team understands the potential cost and maintenance requirements to keep this thing going. Like we did previously with the modern data warehouse, I'm going to now show you a few example designs of this Lambda architecture with some tools that you might be familiar with. And my goal here is not to, again, recommend any of these particular tools, but more so just put it in perspective and give you some examples. In this scenario, we have both batch and stream. Perhaps you use a tool like Fivetran where you can just connect to these different sources and easily dump them into a data lake. So we're still using this data lake concept. And then you're using Apache Kafka for your streaming options. It's that messenger queue. And this stream is gonna have two consumers, one of which will be that data lake. The other could be the analytics platform. Our data lake in this scenario could be an S3 bucket. So both of these are landing it in here at different cadences and moved along into, in this scenario, Amazon Redshift for the warehouse for more structured and then in this example, we're using what's called Apache Spark to process and transform the data in the data lake to an Amazon Redshift environment or directly to an analytics tool. And you could use this similar to how we use DBT before. Apache Spark is an interesting tool, maybe one that you've heard of. It's good for both data streaming, so you can do real-time processing as well as batch processing. You can write in languages like Python, so your options are a little bit more extended than something like just SQL. But at the end of the day, it's just another tool in your toolbox and you use it however you want. You could also use it to extract and load because it's Python-based. But in this example, it's being used for both the real-time streaming and batch processing. So at least there's consistency there. Here's another example. I tried to keep most of this stuff similar, but let's say in this scenario here, we're using a tool like Apache Flink, which is again, another tool, but really what this is focused on is real-time data processing. So this is specific to streaming processing as opposed to Spark, which kind of has a handful of different use cases. And then perhaps you use DBT for some of this warehouse specific focus transformation, mix and match the two. In this scenario, obviously you're getting the best of both worlds, but you have to manage two separate code bases. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what Lambda architecture is all about and use this to compare it with the modern data architecture covered in a previous video. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.